welcome to Fat Quarter Shop live stream Fridays. So much fun today. Today's October 21st. We're starting Socialites. And so the start of this live stream is going to be a little bit different. What we're going to be doing is a free block demo. And then after that, we're going to do like we do the normal live stream where we show trunk show, where we show new stuff, um, stuff like that. So it's going to be a little bit different, but it's still going to be a ton of fun. And we're going to start with Socialites Block 1. And so um, I pulled together my fabrics. And I'm going to talk a little bit about my fabrics in a little bit, but I want to show you some blocks first. So... I'm going to show you different blocks. Now, this is a free pattern that's going to have 24 blocks, completely free at fatquartershop.com. So if you go there now, you can download the fabric requirements for any block size you want to make. And you can download block one, which we put up within the last hour. Those are going to go up about 8.15 central time on Fridays. I saw that question a little bit. So um, the three inch block right here is using Nutmeg by Basic Gray. The six inch block here is the Dwell Fabric Collection by Camille Ross Kelly. The nine inch block is the Cinnamon and Cream Fabric Collection by Fig Tree. And so um, what we're gonna be doing each time is showing you these three collections plus some others. And what I want you to do is just look at it and see with cinnamon and cream, um, this is your fabric three, fabric four and fives, and fabric six. So on this block, we have all mediums darks, and that really pops this pinwheel out. On here, we decided to do a darker fabric on the points and the inside, but a low volume here, and your pinwheel kind of recedes. And then this one is more of a modern collection, so you can really see this inside pinwheel and the post, and then this is more of a low volume. And so this one, when you look at it, you see the inside pinwheel. This one, when you look at it, you see more of the outside. This one, when you look at it, you see more of the peach. So your fabric placement will determine how your block looks. Now what I'm going to do is show you some other blocks because this will help you hopefully with some, some fabric choices. So this first one is a three inch block. The fabric is Grays by Sweetwater and Nova made this one. Teresa made these. Um, Nova made this one and this one has a yellow in the inside. And um, what Nova did that's creative is on these, you can see these are this big pinwheels, all the same color. This one, she did one green and one red, and then a dark outside. This next one is six inches, and Angel made this one using the Blue Jean Collection by Christopher Thompson. It's a Riley Blake collection, and she did that same thing where she did like a dark blue, a light blue. This next one is also six inches. Riley made this one using the Sherry and Chelsea collection. And this is probably my favorite out of all of these. These two are probably my favorite just because I love the movement of this. And I think this stripe um, really adds interest to the inside. Kenna made this one, which is nine inches. And this one is the Isabella Collection by Minnick and Simpson. And so you can see, now another thing you could do with this is you could make all of these the same color if you really wanted that to stand out. So that's also a possibility. And then this one is the Flower Farm Collection by Bunny Hill and Teresa made this one. So this is gonna be Teresa's. And um, on this one, what she did that's different is she put two matching fabrics here and two matching fabrics here instead of opposing. So like here, you've got green, green. So she just moved them. So there's a lot of creativity in what you can do. The one consistency that I see in all of these blocks is this inside point has to be a medium dark for it to really pop out. And you can see by putting the light next to it here, 
it really pops out. So um, that is um, kind of our, we're gonna give you that inspiration each time because we want you to really follow along Feel free to use your scraps. Feel free to go rogue on your fabric. You don't have to follow the fabric requirements. It's just like a little guide. And um, each week, if there is paper to be used, I will show you that each week. Um, this week, there are no paper that you need to use. And then thank you to Hijan Kim for the super chat. Thank you for um, Socialites. It's a really big gift for all of us. Thank you. So hopefully these will provide some inspiration for you. Um, what I wanted to show you is um, a tip from Teresa is what she does is she just uses an Avery label and she puts her name, what block it is. And so when she gets to the end and she has 24 blocks, she'll know which block is which. So you can always put some type of label on the back of yours and um, you can either press open like Teresa or you can press to one side like um, Riley. So um, feel free to move at whatever level you are, whatever you feel comfortable with. And my goal in this is to give you free pattern because it's a big thank you to being a Fat Quarter Shop customer is why we do this. Another thing I wanted to show you is if you look at these blocks, two different makers. They're slightly different size. I wouldn't worry about it. The reason this one is a little bit bigger, it's pressed open. Oh, this one's pressed open too. Yeah, so it's just two different people sewing. Don't worry about it. I would not focus so much on your finish size as I would just focus on doing as good as you can. So these are our block ones. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the designer of block one. So block one is an amazing person. Her name is Bev McCullough. She is a fabric designer for Riley Blake. And this is her newest fabric collection. It is called Daisy Fields. Yeah, Daisy Fields. Um, and I actually made a brick house block with this and some other of my little scrappy blocks that you're gonna get to see soon. Um, but this collection is great. She came out with a stiletto turning tool a while ago. And so that's kind of her like notion. But I also wanted to let you know what she's really known for is her needle minders and charms. And we sell all of those and they're actually the best selling needle minders. She outsells anything we've ever done. So um, really pretty and really great quality. And I think she has them made in the United States. And she also last year came out with a um, magnet board that you can put your needle minders on. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about her because she did the block for all of you for free. So we're going to have 24 different designers we're going to feature. And um, each week I'm going to show you a block. This week I will be doing the nine inch block. So what I'm going to do right now is just go through and show you cutting. And I'm gonna show you how I cut this and how I do this in my sewing room. You can do it however you want. You can starch, not starch. You can do it however um, you want. Um, oh, and then Bev's blocks, let me pop those up real quick. So Bev's blocks, they're so cute. So that's using Daisy Field and that little background that has a touch of gold to it. I don't know if you can tell on the website, but um, when I was working with it, it has some metallic gold. So really pretty and I love her fabric placement. And I, I love that she made all three the same. That's kind of what I did on the first Socialites. So um, I'm gonna jump right in. And of course, I'm gonna answer questions as we go. But what I'm gonna do is just show you my tips. My first tip is, since I'm making the nine inch block, I use some sticky notes to cover up the cutting for three and six. If I don't do that, I will always cut wrong. So I'm gonna start with the background. Now with the background, what I wanted to show you is, when you go to our information sheet, I went ahead and I'm starting with the nine inch, even though I'm doing something slightly different that you can refer to in previous videos. But this is eight and an eighth yards right here. 
So I starched, well, Teresa starched all of this in one piece for me. What I did this morning is I cut off a half yard, cut the half yard into a fat quarter, and then I can just set this aside for future blocks. And here I've just got, so now I've cut this into a, you know, similar to a fat quarter, might or might not be exact, but that's kind of what I do. So what I did is I've already ironed and starched and I'm going to go ahead and just start cutting. So the first thing is four 2.75. So I'm just going to start here and I'm gonna try to do two at a time. So I have it folded over And I'm gonna rotate this. And cutting is so important. I cannot emphasize that anymore. Just take your time um, cutting because the more accurate you are, the more accurate your block will be. So this is A. So what I'll do now is put all of these fabrics right side up so that I don't have to do that later. And I put them the right way. And then this is my A. So I'll put this on my design board as A. B is gonna be four two inch squares. And another thing that I have done is I went through this morning to find any cheats that I could find. Okay, so there's no salvage on the front or the back. So I'm good there. I'm gonna subcut this into two inch. And I am gonna show you some cheats along the way. This one doesn't have any paper piecing or anything like that, any paper. But it does have a spot where you have the opportunity to chain piece. So this is B. And thank you to this, the Stitchery door set. Thank you for the super chat. And um, so now I'm gonna go to C, which is eight, one and five eighths. So what I'm going to do is just really make sure the smaller your piece is, the more accurate you have to be. Just really take your time. And then I'm going to move this out of the way, and I'll show you why in a minute. Now, 1 and 5 eighths, I always keep a calculator because that's just who I am. 3.25. So you can either cut 1 and 5 eighths or, so you can either cut each time like this one and five eighths, or you can cut three and a quarter, and then one and five eighths, which is easier to cut because you're probably more familiar with a three and a quarter. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is put these right sides up and just pay attention to how I have been cutting. I'm trying to cut as efficiently as I can and as neat as I can. So this is C. Okay, so D, I put a note that this would be easier to chain piece. So if I take the D and the H, and the H for me is gonna be green, I'm going to chain piece this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. So this first parenthesis is the three inch math. The second parenthesis is six inch math and the last parenthesis is nine inch. So I'm going to pay attention only to the nine inch and um, your H should be, let's see, 2.75 wide. So I'm just going to cut, let's see, and then the D needs to be one and a quarter. So if I take 2.75 times four, that's 11. So I'm going to cut this 11 inches. Well, actually it's a little, I need to cut it a little bit past 11 inches. So the green, I'm going to cut two and a quarter by 11 inches. So I'm just going to do this. And I'm not even gonna subcut that down because I'm gonna trim this later. 
So I have taken it wider. I just, whatever it is, take it wider. So this is one and a quarter. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but I don't wanna do one and a quarter. I wanna do like one and a half. So I'll just do about that same length and I'll do one and three quarters. And so here, I'm gonna put the two straight sides because these sides are not straight, but these two are. Now, some backgrounds have a right side and some backgrounds do not. This one does. Okay, so I'm gonna put this together and this is going to be my D and H. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda go over again what I did. So I'm gonna have to have four sections of two and three quarters. So I've made sure it's long enough. This right here needs to be one and a quarter wide or wider. This needs to be two inch or wider. So I, to save time, I just cut a bigger piece. I'm gonna show you how to cut it down. I put right sides together and I've got that pinned. That way I can just um, make this a little bit easier. Okay, so now for print one, and I put a note that I am using blue for print one. And just so you guys know, I am trying to make mine match this one. So it says I need four, two and three quarter inch squares. And two and three quarters plus two and three quarters is five and a half. So I'm going to take a Creative Grids five and a half inch ruler. I actually had my rotating mat that I was supposed to use. <laughs> that was what I use at home. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to replicate exactly what I would do at home, except that it's driving me crazy how my table's messy. So five and a half. And then I'm gonna take two and three quarters, which is this white line, because Creative Grids have a white line in the center. Cut that, rotate, and then rotate my, my ruler. And these will be print ones, which are E's. So I will put this on here, take these away. Okay, so for my prints, two and three, I'm gonna cut those at the same time because you need two, two and three quarter squares for total. So, and I, you'll probably notice I cut from a corner that's not the salvage, that's kind of what I do. And all of this is ironed really nice and it's flat because it's starched, but um, if I was cutting anywhere near this, I would flatten it, but these are fine because there's no wrinkles right here. Okay, so like I said, two and three quarters plus two and three quarters is five and a half. So I just make sure I am close enough to the edge Cut that off, rotate, go to two and three quarters. And I did put in a new blade um, this morning. So this is an endurance blade and that is what I use all the time. So this is two and three quarters. Okay, so one of these will be F and one will be G. S well, they'll both be F and G's, I guess. They'll both be the same. So now what I do is I usually keep one design board on the left 
and one on the right. And I'm going to take my pattern and kind of step it out. So take it from one board to the other, preparing each step. So fabric E, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take my B, and I'm going to make a corner square. So to do that, I'm going to take a friction pin on the wrong side and draw corner to corner on there. And it's important to really go from corner to corner because if you st if you do like this over here, it's not going to attach correctly. And we will be getting more prairie yardage in stock. All of it is on order, should come next week. And um, you do have enough room to starch a layer cake, so there is plenty. Okay, so you have two options here or the way I do it, you have two options. You can either put this right on the corner and pin like that, or you can use seam aligned glue. And I'm gonna use seam aligned glue on the others. Oops, I use a little bit too much. I like the seam aligned glue because it will keep it in place and then if I leave and then come back, it's really, really in place and then I don't have to worry about it moving. So that is step one. Okay, step two is you're gonna take, you're gonna make two of each of these. Hold on a second. So you're gonna make, let me see, G. Okay, so we're going to take these and we're going to put C's on them. Okay, so I need to draw a line on all eight of these. I think there might be a mistake in the pattern. So I think that you have to cut more, you have to cut four total of each. I, I think I cut it wrong. So the pattern's right, I just need to cut more squares. But I'll do that in a second. So from here, what I'm gonna do is use seam aligned glue Oh yeah, I was supposed to cut four of each, that's why. I was supposed to cut four instead of two. So, and then I'm gonna put these on the board because they're gonna go on this other corner after. So from here, I need to cut two more two and three quarter inch squares. So I'll just do that same corner
and just do the same thing. So sorry about that guys, just go back and you need four from each. Sorry, I was reading, I just did a G. I didn't do the F. Okay, so we'll save these for a future step. I cut that wrong. Okay, let me cut it again. Sorry, I cut those wrong. Sorry about that. So I get flustered when I make a mistake. So, and this happens at home. Um, so here, this is wrinkled, so I'm not gonna cut there. So I'm not sure what I just did, but I'm gonna just recut because that's easier for me. And you do have enough. If you make mistakes like I am, you have plenty to fix it. So don't worry about that. So I think I, I cut this correctly and I think I subcut correct incorrectly. Okay. Um, you could use uh, school glue. You can use whatever you want. Um, some people do use that. Okay, so now I'm at a place where when I'm looking at the pattern, I need to go and sew directly on this line, directly on this line, and then I need to sew this with a quarter inch seam. So I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and do that really quick all at once. So since I have the quarter inch foot on already, I'm going to do that first. Switch to an open toe foot. And I'm just gonna chain piece these together. Okay, so I'll just use, there's this little, I don't even know what it's called, but it cuts your threads. You can either do that or use scissors. And we're gonna go back to the cutting table. Before we go to the iron, and I'm gonna cut a quarter inch away on all of these. the new weighted rotary cutter the only reason I haven't tried it is because I have a really hard time using any other rotary cutter than this now because I used glue you can't use the other side of these this one I could save if I wanted to 
to make a half square triangle. With the glue, you can't, but these are so tiny, I might not save those. Well, I can't save them because I use the glue. So anytime I'm using something small, I use the glue. If I'm using something big, I do not use the glue. Okay, and I'm gonna take the glue with me and my pattern with me to the ironing table. So on my new ironing table, this is a cover that Denise made. And then this right here is what I do at home is I just put a cheap white fabric so I won't stain this because this is harder to clean. So what I'm gonna do is set the seams. and then press to one side. And make sure you ask any questions. I'm happy to answer any questions. Now what I've decided on this one is I'm just gonna press open. I'm not gonna follow the pressing arrows because the blocks are so small for me it's easier. Now I'm gonna put this with a clapper to make it really flat and let it cool down before I press open. This one I'm gonna set the seam press to one side and again put it on the clapper so that it can cool down a little bit and here I just finger press I'm going to press open my blues I will not be adding anything else to the other corner so I'm gonna put that there, those don't need anything added. Now, if you weren't gonna press open, just follow the direction of the arrows and in the instructions. And you just wanna make sure you don't get the glue too, too much, too close, or you'll have glue in your seam, which I do right there, but it'll be okay. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is go to my design board. And that's why I use these design boards so much. And see that little boo-boo right there? I'm gonna fix that later. Put this like this. I did not do a good job on those at all. That is way off. I think I'm nervous today. Okay, I'm gonna add the second one, make sure right side down, and I'll show you how to fix that after I piece. And then my next step is going to be to sew corner to corner. Now what I wanna show you is, I'm just gonna put these on the board. I made that mistake. So I don't wanna line up this with this white because that's not correct. You need to keep it straight on the original square. So yeah, I'm definitely nervous because I'm making all kinds of mistakes, but just line it up with this fabric, the fabric F or G. And then from there, I'm gonna show you how you fix it. Now you do wanna leave the lid on here um, when you're not using it. So I'm gonna sew with um, an open toe foot right on the line. trim a quarter inch away and um, the ironing table has a big fat um, 
batting in it, and then we just put a Lori Holt deco fabric on top. And Denise made it just like you would make bed sheets. How you do that, I have no idea. Okay, so now I'm gonna go press these. Now, the reason I have a different iron is I have changed irons. So I have been using this one at home recently. Another thing when you press open is pressing from the front really gets it nice and flat. Make sure there's no puckers or anything. And this is just a big board. We bought a big board. We can link it in our Amazon shop, but we just bought it off Amazon. Okay, so to fix this, this is correct because it looks like it's 2.75. But what I'm gonna do is paying attention to the original fabric, not the corner squares. Put this on here. So I've lined it up here and here, ignoring the white, and I'm gonna trim. And this will fix any of my little corner squares that did not come out correctly. And usually mine come out a lot better than that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so you just need two squares for the pinwheels and then you need two more for the next one. I just didn't cut enough. I cut only one. So basically I'm just going back. Now that is like so embarrassing. I cannot believe I did that. That actually should be just completely redone, but yeah, this needs to be completely redone. I'm not doing that. So we're gonna cut another one of these. I'm gonna do another one of these because that is totally not acceptable. I don't want that in my finished quilt. So. Yeah, this is like so embarrassing that I have all these a mess like this. Okay, now I'm gonna also fix these. These should be fine, I didn't notice anything. Well, yeah, these are way off. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed, guys. That is not how to make a corner square, but, woo, today, crazy. But see, then I've talked about it before, some days, I'm having a great day, so I don't know what the problem is. Um, I think I'm just nervous. But, you know, some days you sew better than others, and that is okay. And it's okay to say, you know what, this piece looks like poo-poo. So we're going to change it. We're going to fix it. I'm not going to leave that in my quilt. It's going to go in the garbage. So now that I've fixed that hot mess, these look good, and that looks good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut another one of these. So I'm going to cut a two and three quarter inch square. And then the other square, let me see. And we do give fabric requirements that are gonna allow you to, if you've made a mistake, it's gonna be forgiving. And these squares, let's see, that would be C, would be one and five eighths. And one and five eighths plus one and five eighths is three and a quarter. I'm gonna cut from this little end right here. Because I need two. So hopefully I get this right. But definitely, I would just, you know, if you make a mistake like that, just go back and fix it. It's not worth the stress of me knowing that I have something ugly in my quilt. Draw on the wrong side. It's 
so I probably didn't have it on there correctly. Um, oh, thank you from Janet Buster. I love your live demos and planning live streams. They help me with organizing my projects and inspire me to use my growing stash. Yes. And with these blocks, if you're a beginner, one thing that would be great is make one out of scraps. Get all your kinks out, just like I'm doing. <laughs> Except I'm doing it live on camera, sorry. Now, to, now what I'm going to do is go to the ironing table. Set my seam. Press to one side. That's so much better. And I know you're not supposed to leave the iron like this. This is why I use the white thing. I just do that by habit. And I'm going to add to the other side. And sew this. trim this and then go iron this okay now this one I'm gonna do that same thing where I trim it because it's still a little I think it's just me sewing on camera I don't do this at I don't do this at home. I'm perfect at home. And if y'all believe that, that would be hilarious because. Okay, this one's much better. Okay, so now that I've fixed everything, I'm going to move to looking at this and going to the next page. So this, I'm going to take my A's. And I'm going to put them here and I'm going to attach it here and here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pin it together. And that way when I get to the sewing machine, everything is pinned and it gives you a little bit of exercise because you're standing up when you're pinning instead of sitting down. So I'm going to pin those. Oh, thank you to Patty W for the super chat. Thank you for all your tips. I'm getting more accurate and always learn something new each live stream. Yay. And um, the color sheet, um, you can use that. That's just um, if you want to color, like if you've made a block and you want to just color it in. Okay, I put pink here, orange here. It kind of will help you at the end to not have too much pink together if you don't use a design wall. Will the Dwell hometown, hometown Quilt kit ship in November too. There's not a way to pre-order. Yes. I believe it's set for November. So now that's ready. Now I'm going to go to the next page and you can see when I'm doing this, I try to combine steps so that I have fewer back and forth. Okay. Now here we're going to subcut this and we're going to get this right because I get it right every time. Just kidding. I messed this up quite a bit. Okay. So, if I look at D, it was one and a quarter. One and a quarter, take away the quarter. Oh, I didn't press that open. We got to go fix that. Okay. Okay, so one and a quarter minus the quarter inch seam is one inch. So I'm gonna cut one inch here. And I am putting it right on that line. Okay, now you know this should be two and three quarters, why? Because it tells you right here. So that's two and three quarters. To double check, if you take, this should be two. This should be one and three, 
two minus a quarter inch is one and three quarters, and it should be right on that line, and it is. So I'm going to cut that. So very little waste, but now it's going to be perfectly two and three quarters. I chain piece all the time, but I do want to warn you that I mess that up quite a bit. So I'm sure in this series at some point I'm going to mess that up. Now when I'm cutting the next piece, I'm going to line up the top and the side. So that's one, I need four of these. And by sewing that seam all at once, that was quick, one seam. Now all the work is in some cutting and you're going to get more accurate results. It is something you will just have to build up your skills with and just not get frustrated when you first start because I messed that up the first start. So now that step is done. Oh, and I'm going to use that for this next step. Okay, so this next step I'm going to put here. I'm going to take these, draw a line from corner to corner. Hopefully, when I do it this time, I do not so incorrectly. I think what I'm going to do is use pins this time. Thank you to Larry. Looking forward to this year's Socialites. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad so many people have joined the Facebook group called Socialites Lounge. So much fun. So fun looking at all the fabrics you guys are going to use. And if you make the first block and you don't like your fabric, you can change it. Don't ever feel like if you make a decision, you can't change it. I think that's kind of one of the hardest things. Okay, so here what I'm gonna do is put this together right there. And I'm not gonna use the glue because I don't wanna accidentally put the glue on the wrong side. So to get this to be accurate, what I'm gonna do while I'm standing up is pin twice. I'm gonna pin one side, pin the other. And from the front, you should not see the back. And from the back, you should not see the front. So I'm going to do that on all of these. And the trick in this is going to be cutting the right side. That's going to be the hardest part. So. And you guys can comment and let me know, what do you think of our new set? Um, we added a bunch of equipment from all of you guys' super chats, and I'm loving it, even though I'm sewing incorrectly. So now what I'm going to do is go to the sewing machine with my open toe foot stitched directly on this line. With my quarter inch foot, sew with a quarter inch foot, quarter inch seam. And I do whatever foot is open, or whatever foot is on the machine first, just to save time. Now I did leave the pins on, I just didn't want it to move, so I'll remove those pins now. And I prefer to sew with the flat side up, seams down. And because I am pressing open, I am stitching with a 1.5 stitch length.
Debbie says the set is working out great. Very professional, fantastic videos. Oh, thank you. Thank you to Jordan behind the camera and Denise handing me all the stuff. Okay, so these we're going to just set aside. I'm going to press open. Now, this one, I need them to be like this. So what I'm going to do is... Do this. And that's not correct. But this is. So I'm just looking. So that is how you want it to look. So I'm going to look at that, turn it, and cut this. I'm going to save these pieces for something later. So each one I'm going to check to make sure. That's correct. Cut here. That's correct. Cut here. Um, I notice when you draw your line, you tip your ruler. Does that make it the line be more accurate? Yes, I try to get my line right on the corner because the more accurate my line is, the more accurate I am. So hopefully I did these right. Now we're going to go iron, and I'm going to press open. So I always set my seams first, and that just means putting your iron down and pressing. Press to whatever side's easiest first. Let that cool down. And then press open. I let it sit about three or four seconds. Now these, what I'm going to do is press the top to make sure it's nice and flat. And if it's not flat, you'll see it on the top. Now from here, the same thing. Now one tip is I have right here. This is gonna add extra bulk. When you do this, you're gonna have an extra bulk in there. Cut this little thing off right here. Especially if you're pressing open, that just gets that extra bulk out. Okay, and that, I mean, you don't have to do that. That's just something I do. Two, and I usually count one, two, three, four, five. Slow and steady is how I always think. The faster I go, the more inaccurate I am. Okay, so my, my next step is to make this. So, like I, like I showed you on that other block that Teresa did, if you want yours to go a different direction, you could play with them. The, um, can I see that one right there? This one, she did two, she kept these together. The way I'm doing it, I'm doing it across. 
So always feel free to have fun and change your block however you like. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at it and make sure I've got it, it looks correct. I've got a pinwheel forming and what I'm gonna do is put them right sides together and pin. And then this seam doesn't touch anything, but this one does. So you just want to line it up and pin. And right here, it's like a little bit of bulk right there. Just get that off so that I don't worry about that. Like this, I didn't cut it. And so I'm going to sew with a quarter inch seam straight down here. Now I'm gonna look to see if that matches before I go to the iron, and they do match, so that's really nice. Set my seam. I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over. Pin, set your seam. We should have a little theme song. Pin, set your seam. Press open. Okay, so from here, I'm going to cut this, the little thread apart, put them together and pin. And then we'll be almost done with the block and put in any questions you have on the block. If you're having any trouble with the block, if you have any question, any kind of quilting questions on how to get that accurate. Now, here you can just eyeball it or you can put your pin do you want to zoom way in? And then we'll see. It's going to get a little, there you go. So you can put your pin right in that seam. See where that little V is? Put it right there. It's right in there. Put it right in that seam. So, and then if you let your pin stand straight up, that should be exactly, now that's called polka pin. That's what I came up with years ago. You can eyeball it or you can do that. We can add polka pin to the song now. Okay, and then we're gonna sew with a quarter inch seam down. With a seam like this, I'm gonna try to sew as close as I can to this pin so it's so everything stays together without sewing over the pin. Right before I get to it, I'm gonna pull it out. And it matches, thank goodness. Set your seam. Press to one side, press open, poke a pin. I have nothing else, guys. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to become more interesting. Okay, so now we can lay this out. And so I'm when I lay this out, I kinda just eyeball it first and then I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna kinda just guess and then I think it's gonna be like this. Okay, so what we're trying to do is have kind of a little pinwheel, 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 pinwheel. 
Okay, so the way that we're gonna assemble this is we're gonna sew this. Uh-oh, they said something's wrong. Oh yes, this is wrong, thank you. Oh my goodness. Hot Mess Express. Okay, so I was definitely checking this. I forgot to check this. And you always want to make sure the center is correct. So my goal and what I always do is I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam. So I'm going to pin these. And like I said, um, I usually pin standing up. Am I watching any television trials? Right now, I'm not. I'm listening to an audio book that is excellent. Um, right here, so what I'm going to do is just make sure those seams touch and meet up. Right now, I'm listening to an audible book called A Billion Years by Mike Rinder. It is great, and I'm spacing it out because it's so good that I'm, I just don't want it to end. So I am listening to an audible book, and I still watch all my true crime. Tonight, I have to miss Dateline because my daughter has a football game. So the first thing I do Saturday morning is I'm going to watch Dateline. Wait, watch Dateline and drink my iced tea. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure that lines up, and it does, right there. Then we're going to, oh my goodness, I moved that. Let's see. Yeah, so my daughter's in drill team. I'll just tell some little funny stories. My daughter's in drill team, and so um, I get to go watch that tonight, yay! Last time they danced on the street, which sounds really funny, but um, that was fun. But this this week, it's not her age. Okay, so from here, I can stay at this station. And like I said, I pin when I'm standing up. I don't know. I feel like it's some kind. This is my form of cardio, standing up, pinning. And, and I'm not joking either because I do zero cardio. My cardio is going to be walking to that stadium tonight and then walking to the um, concession stand. Um, so. So now my block is coming together really nice even though I had that little mishap in the beginning and if you look at it it would have looked so horrible to have everything else beautiful and this one little piece wrong so don't all ever feel like and my stitch length I'm using a 1.5 because I don't want my stitches to come out if you're pressing open and you have a long stitch length they're gonna start coming off so I'm gonna leave this here and come back to the station Make sure that lines up and it does. And then do the same thing. Press to one side, press open. And I, tell me if you guys are sewing the block along with me. And if y'all, if this is a good pace, 
And one thing you guys might not know is if you're re-watching, Ashley puts chapters in the bottom. So you can always skip to different sections of the video. Okay, so I'm double checking again. I've got it correct. And here I'm gonna pin both sides. I am gonna cut it apart though, so that when I press open, that seam's not in there. And I'm just going to make sure everything is lined up. Just pin every little, and I do think it's important to use good pins that don't, if your pin is too thick, it's gonna adjust your seam. So, that's nice and pinned, and then I'm gonna do the other side. And the last two live streams, we went in depth about fabric requirements and all the different things. So you, if you are new and haven't seen that, that would be really helpful for you to see. So then I'm gonna stitch with a quarter inch seam. And I'm gonna look at all the little intersections before I leave, because that way, if they're off, I can fix it. But they all look good. Set that seam, ooh, okay, this is a big no-no right there. Fix that. And when I'm doing the final press on the block, I'm trying to be gentle so that I'm not, you know, disrupting the shape or, you know, any of these other seams. And you'll notice when I am ironing, I don't rock the iron too, too much because I don't want to, this is kind of hot, this is why. Hot, hot, hot. And on the front, an Oliver press. Yay, and so, um, this is the perennial block, block one, designed by Bev McCullough. And I am going to, this is an extra step you don't have to do. And a lot of people who are really experienced don't. So when you look and you see Teresa's blocks, she sews better than I do. She doesn't do this final trim. So this is something totally optional. It's just something I do, but not everybody does. So when I trim this, it should be pretty, very little coming off. Really, it's just to get the little threads off. Like that, probably shouldn't have. If I sewed perfectly, it wouldn't come off. And then I'm gonna show you all the six inch blocks one more time because I want, or the nine inch blocks, because I'm gonna show them to you next to each other. And this was something I showed y'all last time, last time we did this, but I think it's really helpful to see. Okay, 
So we just sewed this one. And I just want to show you because I think a lot of people get really, you know, upset if it doesn't measure nine and a half. Mine is... It's a sixteenth of an inch off. It's fine. That's pretty good. I used to be a quarter inch, half inch. When I first started, I would be half inch off. Okay. So this is this is made by Teresa. Hers is exact. That one's more exact. So they're not all going to be exactly the same size. These are actually pretty accurate, but don't worry about if it's not exactly nine and a half. Just worry about trying to get it as good as you can. This one, I did want to point out, this year we did do something a little bit different where we put the skill level. So this is an experienced one, but if you follow what I just did, hopefully that will help you. Um, again, designed by Meb McCullough, and I'm gonna sh I'm gonna answer all your questions now on the blocks. Um, I like to watch the video and then make the block. Yay! And then hopefully you won't make all the mistakes I made. Um, when using the Creative Grids rulers, do I only follow the whole numbers or the half numbers, or do you like me and flip? I um, use all the rulers, all the lines. Sorry. So I usually always keep right here. Sorry. <laughs> But I usually keep like one inch right here and I'll follow the lines this way. Um, I usually don't use it from this direction because I would definitely get it um, confused. The glue says to set it with the iron, but is that necessary? That would require so many more trips. Oh, I've never read the instructions. That's one thing that I'm really bad at. I don't read instructions to anything. If anything needs to be put together, um, I have this little um, guy that I love. His name is Kevin, and he puts it together for me, and then he gets frustrated, and it's like, did you read the instructions? No, I didn't read the instructions. I'm sorry. When you married me, you knew I don't read instructions. So um, I'm really bad at anything. I don't read instructions. I will watch a YouTube video, though. So, um, if y'all have any questions on socialites, just put them in there. And um, the three inch blocks, my tips would be press open. I don't think that if you are making the three inch blocks, pressing to one side, it's gonna come out horrible. I would say it's a really good idea to pin. It's a really good idea to starch and um, you know, just go slow. The star quilt to my left, is that my left? That's my left. That is simply delightful. It is Jolly Bar, maybe? We'll look and see, let me see. Oh, it's Sunnyside. We're just looking on the website, just like you guys. Let's see, Swallow, Swallow Tail Quilt Kit. And, um, yeah. Oh, that's that one. And then this is the charity quilt. Um, okay, so we're going to take a little break. Of course, any questions you have, just pop them in there. When we come back, we're going to talk about designer mystery next year. And we are going to do a trunk show of the brand new Jolly Bar book and talk about that upcoming so along. So I hope you stay. <music>
to answer a couple questions and then move into the second part of the live stream, which will be more like our usual live stream. I do have a little hint though. We are planning to do a nighttime live stream November 7th. So you're gonna to wanna to mark your calendars. Maybe you could tell us what time central you would like us to do, five, six, seven, you know, uh, something like that. We can do a poll um, and see, but uh, it's gonna be, um, we're gonna try it out one time and we're gonna see what happens. Um, Barbara says she doesn't read the instructions and it works out when sewing, but cooking can be a problem. So uh, we write our It's So Emma patterns so that you don't actually have to read. You can just follow the ABCs. And we did that for me because I don't read instructions, but I don't cook, so I don't have to worry about that. What is my favorite quilt to work on, Kimberly? Oh, you know what? I love working on the brick house. I'm on my second one, and I love that quilt for some reason because it's so easy but it's so pretty because it uses so many and i also love that it's a free pattern but i'm making my second one because i love it so that's probably my favorite um denise is asking if you can cut pieces bigger for the three inch blocks and then cut down on this one i would say no now i am going to be showing i came up with something recently actually like in the last month that I tried and I love it. I can't believe I haven't been doing it for the last 25 years. So that's something I am gonna be showing you guys later in the series. Um, I wasn't sure if I would like it, but it just, I think I dreamed about it one night and I was like, you know what, I should try that. Um, so anytime you can cut bigger and trim down, I am gonna always show you that. Um, seven o'clock would be great. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that's what Kevin said. Kevin was like, nobody's gonna watch it, five o'clock. Okay. So I am gonna show you our flash sales, and then I'm gonna show you Designer Mystery, and then I'm gonna show you uh, a, a trunk show that's really cool, all the blocks, really fun, and then show you what's new. So for the flash sale, the first thing is we have these Tool Tron three and a half inch snip a, snip a stitch scissors, and these are great for the airplane because they are small. The second thing is Simple Reflections Journal. So this is, um, I think it'd be a great cookbook, now that we're talking about cooking, is to put some different, what has recipes in it, but I kind of think it'd be cool to put different recipes in it. And it's got pictures of Kim Deal quilts that have been published by Martingale. And Kim Deal is, I love her stuff, and she is so funny. And I am gonna show you, uh, my i'm not going to show you letters to santa but i um november 7th i'm going to be showing that to you so we're going to hold some of the things i've been working on to then so this is on sale today and then this is on sale and this is a great time to talk about this this uh the gypsy quilter came out with these but first kimberbell came out with them and we had thought for a while that we were going to do this for our triangles on a roll but after Kimberbell came out with them, I just decided not to because I am a big person that believes you should not copy other people. So, these would go around, what? The other way, there you go. I haven't used them yet. But these would go around and keep your triangles on a roll um, in place if you wanted to do that. And it comes with a pen, so I guess you can write on it, but these are on sale, this is the, Gypsy Quilter version, they're 50% off and you get three each. I keep trying to go the other way. Um, and we can just roll our triangles on a roll. So I just, um, and for everyone who sent me recommendations, I did think it was a great idea. I just did not want to copy Kimberbell. So that's why we did stickers and sent. And this is our flash sale today. This is Janet Wickerfresh Mad Masquerade. And I'm gonna show you her fabrics open um, the, her artwork is so amazing, and I just think it's, I mean, it's just fun to look at fabric, isn't it? And she does beautiful work. So I'm just going to, and she has beautiful colors. She is probably the second best seller of Riley Blake Fabrics behind Lori. And then I would say Bev McCullough would be after that. And so this bundle is on sale today. Some, mostly our bundles sell out more than our notions. 
And then also, while I'm talking about, while I'm showing you this fabric, I can tell you that until this, um, tonight, midnight. So until tonight, if you order over $40, you get a free Lori Holt Prim and Proper book. And all you have to do is put $40 of items in your cart, not including shipping, and it will automatically pop up and add to your cart. So this is cute. This is little hearts. And then this is what I love of hers. I should probably take some of these and put them in my low volume quilt. Ooh, that's a good idea. I'm going to have to get a layer cake of this. And so my, my nightly live stream, we're going to be just trying some different things always trying to be on the cutting edge, always trying to do something fun and fresh. So we'll see how that works out. Um, what else can the wraps be used for? Um, oh, they're used for her stabilizer. They're used for the Kimberbell stabilizer. That's what she meant them for. And her stabilizers come in like a big roll and some of them are really big. So it keeps it so that your stabilizer, that's what she made them for. Um, we're all mad here. Oh, we're angry. This is like reminds me of Alice in Wonderland, this print. So if you like this, tell me. If you don't like this, tell me. We're kind of just trying some new things um, out. And I always love comments. So you can always give comments. And again, at the end of this video, we will be having a giveaway. So you're going to want to wait for that. But even though y'all comment on the giveaways, anything y'all put that's a tip, I do read everything. Ashley reads everything. Um, oh my gosh, these would look so good in my economy blocks that I'm doing. I'm gonna. Don't tell us what's in the sew sampler. We didn't all receive it yet. Oh, I'm not gonna show you. Would the colors in this pack pack match her colors in the old maid pack? Yes, absolutely. She keeps her colors true between her Christmas and her Halloween. So her Halloweens always go together. Her Christmases always go together. And again, the designer is Janet Wecker Frisch. Debbie says you can also use them to roll up your quilt to make quilting easier and less bulky. That is a great idea. I use the slap sticks on my pantographs for my long arm too. Oh, that's a great idea. Because those come, I think they come on paper. So again, this is the Mad Masquerade Fat Quarter Bundle. 45% off today. And again, if you order over $40, you get that book. So really fun. I'll just kind of flip through so you can see. But I, I love these low volumes. Okay, so now I'm gonna move and talk to you about Designer Mystery 2023. And I'm gonna try to go into depth of why we do things a certain way at Fat Quarter Shop because we get a lot of questions. So 2023 Designer Mystery, I came, I, it was my idea, I came up with it 16 years ago. I can remember exactly where I was sitting when I came up with the idea. I can remember exactly what I did that night because I just thought, you know, I have this fabulous idea and I just remember, I always write things down. I just remember writing a bunch of notes and thinking, okay, I'm gonna show Kevin. I hope he likes this idea. But my original idea was to offer something similar to what a brick and mortar would that's like a block of the week. So if you have ever done that with a store, sometimes you might, you bring a block, you get a block, that kind of thing, but it's affordable. So I decided to do this. And each year what we do is we pick 12 designers from Moda Fabrics, the blocks always measure 12 inch square. So you could take these blocks and set them in a setting from 10 years ago, eight years ago, nine years ago. Each year we try to pick a collection that's gonna be really popular. So we picked Sunny Side by Camille Ross Kelly and um, this is block one. So you can sign up now. 
one of the biggest complaints we get here is when we sell out. But if we buy too much, we cannot pay our bills to buy all the other fabric. So when Kevin and I, we don't try to sell out, we try to sell just like the perfect number. And also we have to pay for all this fabric up front and then pay for it. We don't get our money back for 12 months, 12 months. So there is a reason why. Just know that we're not trying to sell out. Now, the deadline for us to buy this is like uh, December 1st. So by December 1st, secure your spot and we will buy more spots. It's just when we run out, we run out. This one's gonna be from June 2023 to May 2024. The finished quilt is 72 by 93. So what I'm gonna tell you is how this works. You can sign up for just the blocks and you get the fabric and a color pattern with really nice, beautiful instructions from our It's So Emma team each month. You can buy just that, that's very affordable. You can buy the finishing kit. This is, this is not the exact size. This is just our scrap fabric that we're using to make it. Um, you can buy the finishing kit and that is gonna have your fabric for all your settings, borders, and binding. And that will come with the first block. Or if, they're, if mode is behind, it'll come with the second block. And then this is the backing that we picked. So you can buy one, two, Three, you can buy any combination of what you want. Obviously, we make the most of this. Now, when you get the finishing kit, it's gonna come in a keepsake box, um, really beautiful. So, these and these are the fabrics and the finishing. It's a very simple finishing, and um, Denise is gonna kill me, but I'm gonna let, I'm gonna just like, she wouldn't give me the 12 blocks because she was like, I don't trust you to not show up. So anyway, now I'm going to read you all the designers because all of these Moda designers design these blocks, color them for all of you, and it, Camille Ross Kelly, this is her block. We have Sweetwater, Lisa and Carla and Sh Susan from Sweetwater, Sherry and Chelsea, Lisa Bonjean of Primitive Gatherings, Stacy Itsu, Brigitte Heitlin, Vanessa Gertson, Jackie from Sweetfire Road, Barbara from Me and My Sister Designs, Corey Yoder from Coriander Quilts, Joanna from Fig Tree, and Robin Pickens. So I am so excited to show you this. We have been working on it for months and months and months and months and months, and we do put so much time into this. So thank you so much for supporting this program. We're in our 16th year, and obviously we only do it because you guys like it, but um, I will say it's one of my favorite things I've ever come up with at Fat Quarter Shop. And the collection is Sunnyside by Camille Ross Kelly. So now we're gonna do a fun little trunk show. So if you shop at Fat Quarter Shop, you have seen this book. This is our fourth book. We are selling a set of all four books, but the Jolly Bar book celebrates our Jolly Bars. This is all four of the books. One, two, three, four. So, um, the Jolly Bars celebrate our Jolly Bars, which are pre-cuts that are five by 10 inches. You can only find them at Fat Quarter Shop. They're obviously named after Kevin and me. Um, I like to say it's, Kevin does not like anything that says Jolly on it. Um, I don't know why. But um, this is a five by 10 inch Jolly Bar. Just an example of what you would get. So it's five by 10. So it's double a charm pack, half a layer cake, and we came up with it because if you want just a little bit more than a charm pack, you have something. If you want a little bit less than a layer cake, you have something. So this is our fourth volume and um, there are 20 quilt patterns in here. And not all of the quilts are made from the book, but we have a block of each um, quilt in the book. So what I'm gonna do is first show you, if you look here, oops. These are the blocks. Now, throughout, Sarah did beautiful photography of the blocks. Now, the blocks were made in the Beyond Bella collection that I just showed you the Jolly Bar of because we want the book to be kind of evergreen and last 
and not be tied to a collection so much. So I'm gonna show you first all the blocks that Sarah made. And then I'm gonna show you and talk about the sew along we're gonna be doing in January. And you will notice that all of these are different sizes. You'll see big blocks, small blocks, big quilts, small quilts. So this is the blueprint. This one finishes at 62 inches square. And this is an accent fabric, just so you know. So these are all Jolly Bar, but this is an accent. And this white on white that Sarah used is the Beyond Bella white. The second quilt is called Bo Bountiful, Bountiful. Um, this one finishes at 75 by 98. This block is from the crossover quilt that finishes at 83 square. This one is from the Curio quilt that measures 68 inches square. And so you're going to see a nice variety of blocks. This is the double dutch quilt block and that quilt is 68 inches square. I love the colors in this. This is the festoon quilt block. That finishes at 54 inches square. Now, one thing about these blocks and these quilts is they're very easy to make bigger. They're very easy to just add blocks to the left and the right and down. And um, you cannot starch the Jolly Bar um, for these quilts because they use the full amount of the fabric. This is the Galway quilt, which is 60 by 72. This one is the Hazel quilt, which is 53 inches square. And so you can see the Sarah made all of these. This next one is Herb Garden, 56 inches square. And um, this one is the Illumination Quilt that is 57 by 68. And this one, of course, you could always do white. We wanted to have at least one quilt in the book that had a different background, just so you can see that not everything has to be white for a background. And um, just speaking about that, for our sew along, you can use Beyond Bella. And seeing these blocks will give you easy, um, you'll just be able to copy these blocks because we've already colored them for you and they're in the book. This next block is from the Mosaic Quilt, which finishes at 62 inches square. And the next block is the Primrose Block. This is my favorite one from the book. This one is 66 inches square. Really pretty. This next one is Shirley Temple, and this one is 56 by 66. And like I said, they're, they're very easy to just make bigger, make smaller, that kind of thing. Very beginner friendly quilts. And the designer mystery is a beginner to intermediate. Shoe Fly Pie, 60 inches square. Stained glass, 57 inches square. Stardust, 54 inches square. Strawberry jam, this one's bigger at 78 inches. And you can see the reason it's bigger is because it has more of a background and um, that makes it bigger. The Nutcracker Quilt, this one's the hardest. Fifty-two inches square. 
whoopsie daisy 72 inches square that's what i should have said earlier today when i made all those mistakes and then this is my second favorite zinnia and that one is 53 by 62. so um this is only 1095 so you get 20 quilts for 1095 but what I wanted to show you today, because the book came out, those are all the blocks in the book. But we mentioned in a we mentioned in our live stream two weeks ago that we are going to be having a sew along. So from January 19th to March 16th of 2023, we are going to have a Jolly Bar for Quilt Along. We posted a blog announcement this Tuesday that has all of the fabric requirements and the block schedule. So, if you're going to make this, do not starch. If you want the ability to starch, buy a layer cake. You're going to have wasted fabric. But I'm going to show you what I did. And I did use a Jolly Bar. I mean, I did use a layer cake. So, what you need is you need two Jolly Bars or one layer cake. I'm going to be honest and tell you I used two layer cakes because I wanted to be able to make mistakes and I have something fun I did on the back. You need five and five eighths yard of a background, five eighths yard of your accent, and that accent is that gray that's on this big block right here and right here. Binding, seven eighths of a yard and five and a quarter yards backing, and this is gonna finish at 66 by 84. So, um, now I'm going to show you what I did. Now, I'm sewing my version in Simply Delightful by Sherry and Chelsea. I'm going to show you the blocks in the order of the sew along. I'm not going to tell you name by name. I'm just going to show you the blocks. But what I want you to look forward to is I sewed all of these blocks recently and I made notes and tips on making all of these. And if you sew along with us and join us on live streams on Friday, you will be getting my tips. And I've already sewn my blocks. And again, I used Simply Delightful by Sherry and Chelsea. And this is 20708-36 as the background because I have that by the bolt and I love that background. So um, I used two layer cakes. And I'm just going to show you my blocks. Now, Sarah colored it for me. But if you want to make this, by looking at my blocks, you will know how many blocks you need to make. None of the blocks are adjusted. None of the sizes are adjusted. You're going to make the blocks just like you see if you want to get ahead. And we're going to give you a free setting. So... These are all my blocks. And I did all of these, it took me two days. So really easy. And again, I used two layer cakes because I wanted to be able to cheat. I wanted to be able to use less of the white on whites. These are the white on whites, but I tried to use them. I just don't love medium prints in my quilts. And if you've watched the channel, you probably already know that. This one was really hard. This one took the longest. And this is the one where I said you need the accent and we used a Bella solid. I used 9900-128. And I did press open my my units and then press my blocks to one side i didn't even remember what i did i made these a couple of maybe two months ago but this is very easy it's a fun sew along you'll have kind of a sampler ish um i'll give you a sneak peek of the quilt pattern in a second as a pop-up image of how it's going to look all together So very beginner friendly, this one is. Can Sarah please color my socialites for me? Well, she kind of did in the fact that you get to see at least seven collections each week. So that is very helpful. Um, let's see. 
Okay, so that is the front. Now Jordan's gonna pop up the sneak peek of the pattern. And again, that's in, you know, just solid. So you could do that in Beyond Bella. You could do that using Bella solids if you had yardage, or you can just use that as a guide and pick a group that has some pinks, oranges, yellows, navies, etc. But the one thing that I am gonna add to this sew along is, can I see some of the block, the bigger blocks, please? Sorry. So one thing I'm gonna add, and this will be part of the sew along in 2023, is when you're making these blocks, they're big and you have corner squares. When you cut those corner squares off, you have a ton of half square triangles left over, like here and here and here and here. And here and here you have a ton of that left over you have 60 so I saved those and this is gonna be the back of my quilt and I sewed in a label right here this is one of the Sweetwater labels and I didn't it says mama said so and I just thought that doesn't really fit me so I just chopped it off and you can see so and you can see my name so this is gonna be me using all of these leftover and my son will actually lay these out so that was really fun and you could use a fat quarter bundle for the jolly bar book patterns and the final dimension of this quilt is 66 by 84 and then thank you Kay Fran she says thank you for all your tips I feel like I'm growing so much in my sewing it's like attending the Kimberly Jolly University of Quilting. That's funny. And um, steaming, I will talk about steaming in a little bit. So I will talk about steaming and starch a little bit. Don't let me forget. Oh, we're going to show the two quilts. So these are the quilts on the front and the back of the book. They are available in quilt kits. So this one is Country Rose fabric. The quilt is called Parish. We have a fabric kit. And Crystal designed this one. Teresa made it. And Gina quilted it. Okay, and I'm going to show you the binding and the backing. Our backings usually match the backings that we sell. Sometimes they don't. If they don't, it's because we didn't have enough sample yardage. So we'll pull that all the way. I don't see any labels on the back. This quilt is on the back of that book. It's called Frills. The fabric is Dwell. And um, we do have a kit for this one, and we have a fun binding, and I'm going to show you the backing, too. This one was also designed by Crystal. Angel sewed it, and Gina Tell quilted it. And Angel put her name, the date. I think she, I don't know if she hand sewed it. I think she hand sewed it, and then um, made a star, and then basically turned under the edges of the block, and then sewed it down. So really pretty. So that is our Jolly Bar book four. And then this is our support group. So I just, Kevin and I want to give you a huge thank you. We donate, we, we raised $10,208 for National Breast Cancer. And Gina Tell of Thread Graffiti was generous to donate the quilt that was made. Um, and this is now an eBay auction. If you just follow us, we have the auction linked below. And Gina made it, and 100% of the proceeds will go to National Breast Cancer Foundation. And Kevin and I are donating 5,000. Lori Holt is donating 5,000. And I'll show you the back. And so Gina made this. It has a really fun, scrappy binding. We do have quilt kits available, but if you don't want to make it, and you want to raise money for a good cause or donate money to a good cause, you can um, you can uh, bid on eBay. And then we just wrapped up our Christmas time mystery quilt along. And just like socialites, this is a completely free pattern that we are giving to you. 
as a thank you for being a customer and now we can reveal it because it was a mystery so we have free patterns for each block a free pattern for the setting a free pattern for the back now this uses a layer cake and what i did here is i just sewed in my i uh, sewed in a label and this one is mine and quilt kits are available this one is 23 by 27 and just so you guys know every year we do a free halloween or fall design and a free christmas design and so we're already working on 2023s and then i love this comment thank you for validating the walk away technique to just decrease frustration yeah like today if i was sewing that at home um i wasn't that frustrated i was just nervous i might just go eat a cookie or something i wanted to show you angel has been sewing along with us for the the butterfly quilt that tula pink designed and um, so I just want to show you her blocks because she has been sewing them and they are so awesome. And um, the kit was designed by Tula Pink and it has her essential solids and true colors fabric. And the quilt is pretty big. It's 88 by 94. So I just want to show her blocks. Um, because they're super modern and you guys know I don't do modern so I love to be able to show other things besides mine and she did starch this the kit has enough to starch and Angel's a pretty new sewer so um, I'm glad that she's doing this because she's oh that's pretty and she's just making it just like the kit. And then these we showed you uh, before. We showed you these last time. But she went on a two week vacation, which is why we're just now showing the blocks. Because you know, we all need a vacation, right? So really pretty, really fun really modern and we did put up a recent uh she has a new tula has a new collection coming out in july and then she has one coming out in the fall and then i'm going to show you what we have new at fat quarter shop and i'm going to take a little drink real quick Sorry, I'm thirsty. Um, so uh, Sarah put together some bundles and what we were thinking was during COVID, we weren't able to make smaller bundles and cut a lot in our kitting department because of what was going on. So we now went back and we had ideas for these smaller bundles a long time ago, weren't able to cut them now we have the staffing too so we went back and cut the things that we wanted to cut two years ago and we kind of thought about upcoming sew alongs and what would fit what we think you guys are looking for so we put together this lori holt stash builder bundle and we made them smaller and the reason we made them smaller is because like for example with lori most of her collections have 40 pieces that's not always affordable so we mixed together prim b basics and we went with when sarah picked it we kind of went with things that would work for example this would work for the scrappiness is happiness that's coming up a little bit of each color in the bundle so these are lower priced because they have less so that's the first lori I'm going to leave that one out. That one's called Stash Builder. This next one, we all, we have had a background bundle forever. And I decided to just do another one and add some of her newer fabrics with her older. This is called Lori Holt Background Builder. Back quarter bundle. And 
And so this is like from Stitch. These are from Stitch. This is from, I can't think of it, but B Backgrounds, B Basics. It's all a mix, B Cross Stitch. We just mixed and matched. And these are just great stash builders. This is from Cookbook. But I'm happy that now we can go back and actually cut some smaller things. And the Jolly Bar books are written just like the patterns I have on my site that are the free patterns because uh, they are written by the same people. Carnival Basics, this is just a basic, so like just a way to get a lot of um, true true colors, I guess, you know, more like true colors. Um, and a huge shout out to my It's So Emma team. That is Jocelyn, Sarah, Crystal, Angel, Terry, and Nova, and Cheryl. Cheryl Proofs. So this is a combination of just, this is um, some Riley Blake. I think these are all Riley Blake. This one's really cute. This is that pin drop. And then Tilda, um, we put together a tinted Tilda fat quarter bundle, and I was going to talk a little bit about Tilda because you guys might not know. So she, um, I believe she's from Australia, but the way that she distributes her fabric is very different than anyone else in the industry. It comes from another a distributor from overseas, we, I think Australia. And when we get it, we get one shipment. You can never reorder it except for the basics. So we combined some of her new solids and some of her new dots into a smaller bundle and kind of mixed and matched so that you could do a, two, uh, a color range. Now I will tell you, I've never sewed anything with Tilda, but I love looking at it. It's so pretty. One day I'm going to have to do that. That might have to be a bucket list. I'm gonna move down. This is Firecracker, and we put together some reds, peaches, and they're all from Moda Groups. And Sarah did all of these. I think I already said that, but. So these are great for sew alongs, and these are great for socialites too. Like if you wanted to just start with some fabrics and then build later. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about starching and answer that question, but don't take it away, Jordan, because I wanna save it. I'm gonna talk a little bit about starching. And then we have a dreamy low volume Moda Mix bundle. And just like starching, low volume, that word can be so controversial in the quilting world. So low volume kind of means something different than to everyone. But to me, this is kind of a low volume. So we just took some different modas that have low volume and put them together in case you do a lot of scrappy backgrounds. I don't tend to do a lot of scrappy backgrounds, but this is great if you do, and this is yellow. This is like Camille. It's just a mix of all the different, this is uh, Love Lily. This is a Ann Sutton, Minnick and Simpson. Beyond Bella, Minnick and Simpson, and I can't remember who that is. I think that's, I can't remember. This one is called Ocean Moda Mix, and this one, um, we've done this colorway before, and people seem to really like it. And these are all Moda. So we're just having like a big old party of showing fabrics today. It's fun to look at fabrics. So that's the Ocean Moda Mix. This one is Sands of Time. And this one, we get a lot of requests for creams, grays, and whites. So we put together a mix of all different manufacturers. So like this is Andover, they're all different manufacturers. And so these are just meant to be things, this is our gallery, you could put in your stash to have 
if these are like colors you would normally use or a designer you would normally use, that kind of thing. And then this last one's gonna be the most popular. It is Tula Pink, it's called Totally Tula Bundle. And Sarah mixed a lot of her collections. Just, and you can see that everything is very carefully curated where you get different colors so that you could actually make a quilt with it. Um, Rebecca says she has 20 tabs open. That's funny. And then thank you to Tammy Stanley for the super chat. And thank you. And this is funny. Uh, we should have a contest for a t-shirt at Kimberly's Cool at University. That'd be so funny, these little cats. Oh, nighttime live stream, 7% got, 7 p.m. got 61%. Kevin was right. Kevin's always right. I, I always say that, and I'm not even kidding. He's always right. It drives me crazy. This is one of the best-selling prints of her collections. And uh, I'd love for you to comment. I'm going to read all the comments. So do you like seeing this fabric? Do you not? Um, I want to know because we're trying to just, you know, do things different. Okay, so I'm going to put these back neatly so that I don't have a hot mess after. Meaning the people who work for me don't have a hot mess after. I have a lunch meeting right after this video. Oh, fabric. It's like fabric heaven over here. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine if I just took all this home? Oh my gosh. I would have so much stuff. This, I would love to do something out of this. That would look really good in swoon. So fun to see, but I need to rob a bank. Well, we, that's why we were trying to put together smaller bundles because you know, when the fabric companies now they're coming out with collections, they're like 30 pieces, 40 pieces. It's so hard. And we used to offer these small bundles and they were always such a good thing for customers who don't want a huge bundle. And we had to stop for such a long time and we finally have the space and the ability to recut, so really awesome. Okay, so I was gonna show you this. This is strawberries and cream, and I was also gonna tell you one thing about Andover because I've seen some questions on it. So with Andover, we received the yardage first. And at Fat Quarter Shop, we cut the half yards. Oh, I'm gonna open this. And we cut the um, one yards here. The fat quarters, 10 inch squares, charm packs, all of that are made by Andover and those come in a month. So if you don't want this much fabric, just wait and we will have the um, fat quarter bundles and pre-cuts later. So this is strawberries and cream by Laundry Basket Quilts. I love her reds and I love her blues. She does have, this might be really interesting for you guys. She has a green group coming out. She's never done that before. I'm gonna show this one. And when I say green, I mean green. And actually, this is, sounds horrible. Kevin's favorite color is green. My least favorite color is green, followed by purple. So it's kind of interesting. But these are just really pretty. I don't know. I just I just want to see this stuff for myself. You know, when we buy fabric, we buy it on paper. Meaning we see it on paper. We don't ever really get to see it, except for a couple of manufacturers let us see it in advance. But I wanted to show you this one because this would be a great backing. Because it's like a cheater. It's got all of the stars. And if it could make it, say you did a lap quilt or something in a really intricate front, you could put something like this on the back and then it looks like you pieced two quilts even though you really didn't. And then speaking of Tilda, I was gonna show, she has a new group called Chic Escape. Now the, there's a prints and then there's a blenders and I just wanna show the blenders and um, just really pretty and Tilda sells great for us. It's one thing that 
it's hard for us because when we sell out of just one SKU, we can't make more bundles. So, okay. So now I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna answer questions and then we're gonna do a giveaway and I'm gonna talk about starching. So the first question is, does the Tula Pink Butterfly come with enough to starch? Yes. Um, Kathy says she loves seeing fabric. Touching fabric is so much better though. That's true. They like seeing the fabrics. Okay. I don't want it to be salesy. I just want it to be like, we have this. It's so pretty. I don't expect you guys to like buy all of it. If I have 76 fat eights and 10 fat quarters with Lori yardage, would that be enough with scrappy? Oh, that's way more than you need for scrappiness. So sampler. Scrappiness quilts along. Any wide backings coming? Okay. That's a very good question. I have not seen any, and that's because they're made, I believe, in Pakistan, and with COVID, some of the factories shut down. So I have been wondering the same thing, and that has definitely, all manufacturers have kind of, I mean, they might have a few, but it's very few and far between. Any tips on piecing with wovens? Uh, starch it. They're stretchier. Yeah, I would starch. I notice all these Fabric bundles can be mixed. They go together color-wise. Yes. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about starching real quick. Because And the reason why is I saw some comments last night. So I'm going to tell you what I do. And I'm going to tell you the pros of starching, the cons of starching, and always remember, you be you. Do whatever you want to do. When I come on here, I'm just showing you what I do. Y'all do whatever you want to do. Like, to me, I just think that's just how you should live your life. Be yourself and do whatever works good for you and be a positive person. And as long as you're not mean to anybody, everything should be good. So, starching. I learned this from Lisa Bonjean. I take my fabric. There are plenty of videos on our site. Maybe Ashley or Sophie could link to them. I starch it. Um, I had a really wonderful customer send me six... Uh, boxes that lasted like two months I didn't realize how much starch I use I use so much starch this is the only starch I use I'm not affiliated with the starch company in any way I saw some people saying that um, um, I can starch a piece so let me see a jolly bar I'll show you how to do it I'm gonna show you how I do it and talk about how I do it and talk about the pros and the cons so what I do at home is on my ironing board, I put a couple of these and they end up being super thick. I'm just gonna show you how I actually starch a piece of fabric. And my son does this with me actually. I'm gonna put out a couple. Great idea, Denise. I'm gonna pick a color I like. I'm not starching purple. Somebody told me to starch purple in here. Okay, these are good colors right here. Okay, so the first thing is I'm not affiliated with this company in any way. Nobody pays me. I pay for my own starch. It costs me like two or three hundred dollars every quarter. So please don't think I'm trying to sell you anything I'm not. I'm just showing you what I do. So I take my fabric, and this is how heavy I starch it. You wanna make sure you completely cover it and don't leave any empty spaces. Any empty spaces will leave a stain. So if you just starch like that, you're gonna have a stain mark right there. So it has to be 100% covered. You just gotta get it all covered. And then I, I have two different drying racks that I got. They're just closed drying racks maybe? I don't know, I don't iron. So they're just drying racks. Like, and I got them at Amazon and they're in our Amazon shop and I just put them on there. And on the back, 
it should be completely saturated. There should be nothing missing. And this is how I starch. Now you just put them on the rack, just like that, and you let them dry. It takes about eight hours when I put the fan on. That is how long it takes. So that's how I starch. So um, that's what I do. Now what that, I'm gonna tell you the pros and the cons. What that does is it completely shrinks your fabric so that it's nice and stiff. When you see my blocks, a lot of you ask, how do you get it so perfect? That's one of the ways is I starch. The con, it is not good for the environment. I have been searching. I have seen several companies come out with liquid starch that is not in an aerosol can. I have tested all of them and I have tried all kinds of other things. I cannot find one as strong as faultless and I need it to be that strong. So that would be the con is the environment. Um, but if we could ever get a company to come out with one that thick, that would be great. I have tried all of them. So if you put a comment in there, I'll tell you I've already tried it. Um, they just don't, they aren't as uh, heavy. But what they will do is they will give you accuracy in your piecing, but they will shrink your fabric. So that's also a con. It's gonna shrink your fabrics. But when I'm starching, I've already pre-shrunk everything. I starch the front, the back, the background, the binding, the everything on the quilt is all starched. Nothing goes unstarched. Then when I'm piecing, if I use steam, it's not gonna shrink anymore because it already shrunk in my starching process. So the pros really are, it gives me accuracy. It's more enjoyable for me to sew because nothing is stretching and I get more, I'm a very, if you can't tell, I like things to be a certain way. Um, and honestly, I have four kids. The only control I have in my life is probably uh, my sewing. <laughs> everything else, I mean, like everything else in my life is like, I don't know, just everywhere. Um, I have a great life, I'm not complaining anyway, I'm just saying, but I like to have like the control and sewing gives me that control. The cons are it's bad for the environment and it shrinks, so sometimes you have to buy more fabric. Like you might need to buy a layer cake instead of a Jolly Bar for the sew along, that kind of thing. Um, so starching is gonna shrink it, steam will not affect it later. I would not start your quilt top when it's done done because if you starch my way, it's already starched. Should you use steam on pre-starched fabric? Yes, I always use steam. I always use starch. But remember, sew whatever you like at home. Don't sew just because I do it my way. Sew whatever's enjoyable for you because if you sew with fabric you don't like, you're not gonna finish the project. If you sew with a technique you don't like, you're not gonna finish the project. The goal should always be to buy stuff you like and finish it. And that's one of the things is I get so many comments from you guys is, oh, you don't sew modern. You only sew the colors. You only sew this. This is, what... yeah, because it's my show and I love it. And if I was sitting there sewing stuff I hated, I would just be like, eh, it wouldn't be good. So, you know, oh, she needs a yes, I starch t-shirt. Can you imagine if I wore that somewhere? People would be like, what? crazy. How will I starch the seven yards you're using for scrappiness is happiness? Do you cut it down into background and backing? You can do either or. So I have this uh, drying rack that opens up and it's big. So you can just starch the front, the back, and then let it dry. Or you could starch it in one yard or half yard chunks. Kind of depends what I do for each quilt. But one thing that I do do that is different is I always do length of fabric borders. I never, you will never see a seam in a border of mine because that drives me crazy. And length of fabric to me really makes it pull together. So giveaway. And of course, any questions you have, comment below. Giveaway. We're going to give away three October Sew Sampler boxes completely free. Now, I'm not going to show you what's in there. But when the video is over, I want you to comment and tell me what size block are you making 
and um, you have until Monday to comment and then Ashley will pick on Monday and you'll see the winners in the community tab. So it's not a membership to the club, it's just three free boxes. And I cannot tell you how hard it was to get three boxes um, left over because uh, we had sold out October. So you're really lucky if you get this and then comment and let me know what do you like best about the show? Because I would love to know. Have a great weekend.